So we've already seen now how to find the, um, to estimate maxima and minima using our graphing calculators, but unfortunately, if we don't have our calculators or if we want exact answers, uh, we're usually going to have to do something different. And so there are two analy uh, analytical ways using calculus to determine where our relative extrema will be. Um, the first way we're going to see calculus-wise is called the first derivative test. And the way this works is as follows. So um, if we are given a function f of x that is continuous and I'm going to just say um, around x equals x naught um, and that, by that I mean for some open interval a to b where x naught is somewhere in there. It could be in the middle, it could be whatever. I just need to have some interval around there. Um, so continuous around x equals x naught um, two possible things that could happen. So I know one if f prime of x is greater than zero, um, let's not say two, let's say left of x equals x naught, and f prime of x is less than zero, right of x equals x naught. So if this is the case, then x naught f of x naught must be a relative maximum. Could also be an absolute maximum, this doesn't tell me about that, but it must be a relative maximum. Okay, I'll, I'll come back and explain that after I show the other possibility. The other one is this. If f prime of x is less than 0 left of x equals x naught and f prime of x is greater than 0 right of x equals x naught, then x naught f of x naught must be a relative minimum. Okay, so the last question that you might ask about this is why? Why does this have to be true? Well, if I'm looking at this and if I say, okay, f, uh, f prime of x is greater than zero, that means that f is increasing to the left of x naught, okay? So um, it's increasing over here. And let me just toss in an x naught, okay? And then it says, okay, and f prime is less than zero, right? That means it is decreasing in here. Now, I don't know what happens here. I could, ha I could be non-differentiable. This does not require differentiability at x, not just continuity. But regardless of what happens, as long as I have a positive slope to the left and a negative slope to the right, it should be pretty obvious that I must get a maximum doesn't have to be the 
absolute maximum, but it has to be a, at least a relative maximum. Similarly, if, um, if I have this case around x naught, and to the left I have less than zero, so that means that since f prime is less than zero, it is decreasing. To the right, f prime is greater than zero, that means it must be increasing to the right, and you can see from this diagram it's continuous through there. I must get a relative minimum there. It doesn't need to be the absolute minimum, it could curve back down, but it must be a relative minimum. Last thing that's worth noting here, we have one more definition that is useful, and that's what we're going to call a critical point. Okay, and a critical point is any point x naught f of x naught um, such that f prime of x naught is zero or f prime of x naught is undefined. The importance of this is, if you'll notice, um, the only possibility for it to change from a positive slope to a negative slope here is one of two things. Either I get a horizontal tangent at the top, meaning f prime would be zero, or I get um, a corner. But either case, if I have this relative maximum, I'm going to have to have it happen at a critical point. Same thing for relative minimum. If it goes from decreasing to increasing, either I'm going to have to have a horizontal tangent here, it's either going to have to level off, or I'm going to have to have a corner or a cusp or something that um, f prime is undefined. So it's, but it's worth noting that all of my extrema will occur at critical points. Not every critical point will give me a relative uh, maximum or relative minimum. Um, but a process that I can use, and a lot of, use it so often a lot of people, there's a little joke, when, when in doubt, take the derivative and set it equal to zero or find where it's undefined. I had a bunch of my students say, take the derivative, set it equal to zero if you don't know what you're doing, because finding critical points is so important to finding these extreme values. Um, and once you find them, then you can determine where it was increasing and decreasing. So this is how we're going to use the first derivative test. Find the critical points first. Determine whether it's increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing, or neither of them. It's neither of these around there. I might not have any extrema. But once you've determined that, you can say 100% um, certainty you can tell that it's a maximum or minimum.